Warning. Sodium chlorate and potassium permanganate are both strong oxidizing agents and must be handled with care. Proper safety equipment must be used, and this experiment must be done in a fume hood or well-ventilated area. Today, I'll be performing a pretty simple science demonstration that's done in most middle school and high school chemistry classes, the screaming gummy bear reaction. I'll be doing things a little bit differently though. Because I have sodium chlorate and Welch's fruit snacks on hand, I'll be using these as a substitute for the potassium chlorate and gummy bear that would typically be used. This should have no overall effect on the demonstration though, as these will react in the same exact manner. For trial 1, I put some sodium chlorate into a glass test tube, and then I heat it up to its melting point. I'm not exactly sure why, but when I was performing the experiment, I was mesmerized by the molten sodium chlorate. Something just seems cool to me about molten salt. Anyways, after all was ready, I dropped in a peach fruit snack. When sodium chlorate is a liquid, it's actually rather unstable, especially once heated past around 300 C. When this point is reached, it breaks down into sodium chloride and oxygen. The heat and excess oxygen being produced allows for the combustion of the sugar within the fruit snack, quickly producing carbon dioxide, water, and even more heat. This massively exothermic reaction drives the initial sodium chloride decomposition forward until completion. When I put the test tube at a greater angle, the melting of sodium chlorate looked a lot like a miniature avalanche. Because the last shot was so close up, I wanted to get a wider angle in hopes of catching some of the flame shooting out the top of the tube, as well as some of the smoke being sent out. Now as a point of comparison for my following trial, I wanted to see the reaction of just potassium permanganate and a gummy. As you can see, this reaction is rather slow and not too impressive. The potassium permanganate oxidizes the sugar to form carbon dioxide and water, plus a few other side products. So, what would happen if you combined potassium permanganate with molten sodium chlorate, and then dropped in a gummy? After I melted the sodium chlorate, I added the potassium permanganate. As you can see, the two compounds actually seem to react. Before going any further, I want to address what might be going on here. Because the sodium chlorate is hygroscopic, meaning it tends to pick up and hold on to water, I assume that the reaction between the permanganate and the chlorate was facilitated by that water. At first, they reacted and produced a dark pink color, which is indicative of the manganese 2 plus cation. The standard electrode potential table for redox reactions states that the reduction of permanganate has a potential of plus 1.51 volts, while chlorate is negative 1.23 volts. Therefore, the reaction shown here is possible. The permanganate can be reduced into manganese 2 plus, while the chlorate is oxidized to perchlorate. Quickly after the pink disappears, however, it's replaced with the black color. Manganese dioxide, a possible reduction product of permanganate, 
is also characterized by such a dark color. Therefore, the following reaction is also possible, where the permanganate is reduced into manganese dioxide, while the chlorate is oxidized to perchlorate. Because I see significantly more black than pink in the test tube, I'm going to assume from this point forwards that this was the dominant reaction. Now that I've covered all of that, let's get into the main reaction. I dropped in another peach gummy, and this is what happened. Nothing happened. At least part of this reaction was due to the excess of sodium chloride present from before putting in the permanganate, which would result in the same equation as before. I'd like to believe, though, that perchlorate also oxidized the sugar in this reaction. I'm just going to use potassium perchlorate here, as the potassium likely has a greater affinity than the sodium for the perchlorate ion. The potassium perchlorate would react as follows, directly producing more water and carbon dioxide as well as some potassium chloride. Overall, this reaction was far less impressive than I expected. Honestly, I probably should have known that the permanganate and the sodium chlorate would react, as one is more oxidizing than the other, but I didn't really think about this. I did notice at the end of this reaction, however, a distinctly sweet smell in the air which I had not noticed with the other reactions. It smelled exactly like a freshly cut peach, which was the flavor I used in the reaction, which was rather strange. If anyone happens to know why this strong smell happened with this reaction, but not any of the others, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to know why it happened. That's all I have for this video. If you like what you saw here, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like these. Also, don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have something to say, because I try to reply to every single comment, even while I'm posting weekly. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.